Hey team, welcome back to my channel. This is a video about JSON in SQL Server. I have a bunch of examples. When you leave here, you'll know everything you'll need to know. So you want to learn the open JSON function in SQL Server. The first thing we have to check is your compatibility level. It has to be 130 or higher. If you're on Azure SQL 120. Now, based on what version you have installed on your computer, these are the supported levels. For instance, my computer is for the 2019, so I have 100 to 150 available. If you execute this command, select star from sys databases, it will end up showing you what your level is. So notice here I am at 150, so I'm good. Now imagine if you will, your database is at the compatibility level 110. This open JSON would not work, so we're gonna need to change that. Now I have one big disclaimer. Do not do this on a production database. There can be so many ramifications that you could be in deep trouble. So do not do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alter my database and I'm gonna set it into single user mode. And then I'm gonna come down there and I'm gonna set it to 130. And then I'm gonna set it back to multi-user mode. Well, let's see what that looks like when we're here now. Notice here I went to 130 and I'm in single user mode. Now, after I execute this command, it's gonna put me back in multi-user mode. And we'll re-execute this. And notice that we are good to go. Remember, don't do this on a production database. You'll wish you didn't do it. We're going to be looking at the isJSON test. And what it does, it tries to validate whether or not the string expression is valid JSON. So notice here on line 28, I would say if isJSON, the name of my variable, equals 1, then it is going to do this select star from open JSON. Now star, when I don't do any with clause, will always return me three columns, key, value, and type. So now let's look at our JSON. Notice here that we have just some standard easy. This is the key and this is the value. Here we have an array and here we have an object. So this is just like your basic learning set. And when we actually execute this, notice that we get our output. Now there is one thing that I would like to share with you. If I come up here and say bit false and I re-execute this, notice that it executes is valid. But what had happened is I had went out to another website and I took that same command out there and notice that it told me I have an error duplicate key bit false. So be careful when you want to integrate with other systems and you understand that. The second thing I would like to bring to your attention is the use of n. Notice here I have some Unicode characters. And n varchar is for the Unicode character. But if you don't prefix your text with the end, notice on line 3 here I'm getting that value. If I were to turn this off, like forget it, and then re-execute this, Notice I get a bunch of question marks and it's saying, hey, what is that? So be smart when you're using nvarchar and always put the n there. And there you have it. Here you can see I'm defining my JSON as an nvarchar 700. I can also say max. And this is just the JSON that we have been using so far, so no secrets there. Now I'm going to be creating a memory variable of type table. Notice it has three fields. If you can remember the last part of the video, I told you that it returns three columns. You can see here that I'm going to take these three columns and I'm going to map them to fields, field one, two, and three respectively. Let's see what happens when I execute this. Notice that it didn't come out with key, value, and type. Now it's field one, two, three, and those are from a temporary table. 
And that's the way that works. Here you can see I'm going to begin with the with clause. So I have my JSON. I'm declaring that as a n varchar of max. And now notice that I'm saying open JSON and then I'm saying dollar dot supplier. Well, what that is, is that is the starting location. That's where I want to begin. And notice that's here. So whenever I'm using my with clause, notice that I don't use this in here because I'm starting inside of this open and close brackets that represents an array. So notice that when we execute this, I get supplier ID, supplier name. Now this name goes up here. So if I just say star here, it would get both of these columns here. Let's see if that work. And there you have it. As you can see in this on line 16, I am beginning my pattern with using just dollar. Dollar to me represents kind of like the root and the root is kind of like right before I get to this. Now notice I have to use suppliers and because this is an array, I say supplier sub zero and that kind of gets me inside of here and then supplier dot SID. If I wanted this last one, zero, one, two, three. So suppliers sub three dot supplier dot phone. Remember, let's execute this so we can see what happens. Notice my output is supplier, supplier name. And notice that I'm getting sub zero, the SID, that would be one. And then I said, go get me three zero one two three the phone so it would be this four so one and four there you have it we're now going to look at json path modes lax and strict by default it's always lax and what does lax mean well that means like if i see an error inside of my path and that does not exist, I'm not gonna blow it up. I'm just gonna return null. If I say strict, then I will blow up. So let's go ahead and put in lax here. And when I execute that, remember this is by default, we don't need that. So when I execute this, notice I'm looking for, I normally, if I was on top of my game, I'd be looking for SID, but you know, I wanted something else to see if it would work. So when I execute this, Notice the value comes back as null. It doesn't blow up because I'm in lax mode. Now, of course, if I just remove that and execute it, it executes the same. Now, if I was to type in strict, and I run this, notice that it will go kaboom. There you have it. Because SI little d is not available. Remember, JSON is case sensitive. So you'll notice in this JSON, it's a little bit more squirrely. You know, I've got more brackets, you know, more arrays, arrays within arrays, but this is not a game changer. All you have to do is just like follow the steps. So language into SQL, SQL is an array. So we know we have to come down and say, which one of these objects do we want? And then once we pick one of these, it is a array. So Notice on this first example, language SQL sub zero, job type sub zero. So if you were looking up here, which one of these would we get? We'd get this one right here. Let's execute this. Very good. In our next example, we're using JSON value again, looking at JSON. And I want to go language SQL sub zero, job type sub one. So language. SQL, SQL is an array. I want to go to sub zero, so it'll be this line. And then I'll be looking at job type sub one, zero one. So I should get DBA in this example. Let's execute that. And there you go. In our next example of JSON value, notice I'm using language, SQL one, TSQL type one. So what does that mean? So language, 
SQL, SQL is an array. Which one do I want? Sub 1. So it'll be this line. 0, 1. And then I want TSQL type 0. TSQL is an array. Sub 0. Procedure. Let's execute this. Procedure. And our last one is language JavaScript. So language JavaScript, JavaScript only has one entry, sub zero, and then job type sub two, zero, one, two. This should print out utilities. Utilities. In this example, we're just doing like a basic select statement, but we're getting the data from a JSON object. Notice here, I've pathed it out, and you already know what this means. So I should get something that has two columns. Let's execute this. Notice TSQL and utilities. So we'll just do the bottom one. Language, JavaScript sub zero. This is an array. This is sub zero. Job type sub two. Job type zero, one, two. Utilities. And our last example for JSON value, notice that I have built my JSON in line. Then I have my path here, and I say name first. So name first should print out Nicole as first name. And there you have JSON value. So notice here I have created some JSON. I have a root called supplier. Supplier has an array of objects. And then my goal is I want to call a store procedure and I want to insert this into a table. And how would that work? Well, here's our store procedure. Notice here I said create procedure insert suppliers and I'm sending in at JSON of nvarchar max. So the first thing I do is on line 13, let's validate that, that this input, because I could just send in like my name here. This doesn't have to be JSON. JSON is just a string. So I'm saying, hey, let's validate that that's a valid JSON object. So if that is one, that means it's valid. And then I'm going to do an insert and two DBO suppliers. And then here is my open JSON command. And notice that I'm going to be looking for SID, name, and phone. SID, name, and phone. So let's come over here and execute this and see what happens. And notice that has been successful. So that means this store procedure is now created in my database. Now when I come over here and try to execute this store procedure, this is a table. Let's see if there's any data in there. So notice that we have four rows of data in there. Let's go ahead and clean that up and truncate that table so that there's no data in there. And re-execute this to prove. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to execute this store procedure and we're going to pass in this data. Let's do that. Ready? Execute. And notice that it went through there and I actually printed out the data as on line 21 and 22 from that table. So that store procedure executed correctly. And there you have it, team, JSON for SQL.